Hello there. Tory rebels have forced Boris Johnson to water down his Brexit plans. Firstly, please subscribe and like this video to give my channel a boost. And I'm always uploading new content, so please do check back daily. And a big thanks to my Patreon and PayPal supporters. I asked the Brexit question yesterday, is Boris about to cave under pressure from Tory rebels? And the answer seems to be, yes, he has. After putting forward a strong set of clauses in the UK Internal Market Bill that would, if enacted, ensure the constitutional future of Northern Ireland within the UK, Boris has now agreed to water them down. The Tory rebels faced him down and he buckled. His initial plan was for the government to have laws on hand that they would be able to quickly deploy to see off any threat from Brussels aggressively interpreting the withdrawal agreement so as to blockade Northern Ireland off from the rest of the UK. But after what is being called a constructive meeting with the rebels, Boris has had a change of heart. He has now agreed that before any such move can be made, he must win a further vote in the House of Commons. So we now hear that a government amendment is on the way to give the bill a more explicit democratic mandate that adds legal certainty. Now that might go some way to placating his backbenchers, but Brussels has said that anything other than total compliance with the withdrawal agreement is a non-starter. Brussels wants those withdrawal agreement breaking clauses completely removed from the bill. They are unhappy to have them there even as some sort of emergency break the glass type clause. EU Commission Vice President Valdis Dombrovskis said, We are concerned about the behaviour of the British government. If the UK does not comply with the exit agreement, there will no longer be a basis for a free trade agreement between the EU and the UK. The UK government must correct this before we continue to negotiate our political and economic relations. But despite this, the EU Brexit negotiator Michel Barnier has been told to stay at the table to continue the talks. And the Express quotes a senior EU diplomatic source as saying... Everyone was in total agreement that we should not fall into the trap of suspending negotiations. This is something we won't do. We have a legal trap for this under the withdrawal agreement. Let's take our time with it. We would be doing a favour to the Brexiteers by suspending the talks, so that was never actually an option. Now, in a joint statement with the architect of the Tory amendment, Sir Bob Neill, a government spokesperson said... We welcome the way the Parliamentary Party has come together on these issues. There is near unanimous agreement that the government must be able to use these powers as a final resort, that there must be legal certainty and that no further amendments are required on these powers. But now that the rebels have Boris on the run, it will be much harder for him to get Parliament to agree to the use of those powers even in extremis. Ed Miliband, the Shadow Business Secretary, said, This does not fix the problem of breaking the law, damaging our reputation around the world and damaging our future prosperity. We need a trade deal with Europe and that is what we were promised. Breaking our own word and the treaty the Prime Minister signed puts that at risk. While the person who started this furore by saying the internal market broke international law, the Northern Ireland Secretary Brandon Lewis, came out on the EU side saying that they were negotiating in good faith, when even Labour's Hilary Benn said he didn't think they were. But did you know that the EU itself is right now in breach of international law? The Lisbon Treaty came into force on the 1st of December 2009. Article 6.2 of that treaty requires all EU member states and the European Union itself as a body to sign up to the European Convention on Human Rights, the ECHR. 
the ECHR being a convention that falls under the Council of Europe, which is totally separate from the European Union. So this would place the EU under the Council of Europe's European Court of Human Rights. Here's what Article 6.2 of the Lisbon Treaty says. The Union shall accede to the European Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. Such accession shall not affect the Union's competences as defined in the treaties. Now that article is EU law and says it will sign up to international law but be able to choose the bits it wants to obey. But the European Union has not even signed up to the ECHR, despite being required to by a treaty it signed. And why hasn't it signed up to the ECHR? Because its own internal court, the European Court of Justice, the ECJ, said it would interfere too much with EU law. Here's what the EU Parliament says about it. The draft accession agreement of the EU to the ECHR between the 47 member states of the Council of Europe and the European Union was finalised on the 5th of April 2013. Asked by the Commission to deliver an opinion pursuant to Article 218 brackets 11 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the EU on the compatibility of the draft agreement with EU law, the European Court of Justice identified problems and gave a negative opinion in its opinion of 18th of December 2014. Referring to Protocol No. 8 relating to Article 6.2 of the Treaty on the European Union, the Court recalled that the accession agreement had to fulfil certain conditions to make provision for preserving the specific characteristics of the EU and of EU law as well as to ensure that accession does not affect EU institutions' competences or their powers. In that context, the court concluded that accession was liable to upset the underlying balance of the EU and undermine the autonomy of EU law. And the page I got this from was updated on the 4th of September this year. So suddenly EU law can be sovereign and autonomous, allowing the EU itself to ignore a treaty it has signed up to. Not sure about you, but the word hypocrisy springs to mind, does it not? And other commentators have pointed out other examples of the EU playing loosely with international law. Where have the Labour, Lib Dems, SNP and Green Party been? Why have they not been demanding that their beloved EU obeys the letter and spirit of international law and immediately signs up to the ECHR? No, they think only that the EU is good and the UK is bad. And those Tory rebels should be asking themselves the same question, along with, why are we the only country ever expected to toe the line? Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it by following the link in the descriptions box below and support me on Patreon or PayPal. So what do you think about all of this? Please share and comment, and thank you for watching.